Hey, this is Presh Tullwalker. There's a viral puzzle that has been making the rounds. Here's the problem. A man steals a $100 bill from a store's register. Then he buys $70 worth of goods at that store using the $100 bill. And he gets $30 change. How much money did the store lose? Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try. And when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. Now, whenever you see riddles online, it's hard to tell just how many people are getting the wrong answer because these arguments get very heated. So I was curious myself, what's the distribution of answers people would give? So I conducted a poll on my community page, and I want to thank 35,000 of you who voted within just one day. So what did people answer? I gave the choices of $200, $130, $100, $30, and none of the above. So 6% of people gave the answer of $200, 4% of people gave the answer of $130, 80% of you gave the correct answer of $100, about 4% of people gave the answer of $30, and then 7% of people gave the answer of none of the above, and there's some reason you could justify this answer if you think about it from an accounting perspective. I wouldn't be too angry if someone said none of the above and justified it correctly. So, if 87% of people gave justifiable answers, that still leaves about 13% of people who gave the wrong answer. So let's go over how to figure out the answer of $100. So we'll go through it very carefully. We'll start out with the first sentence, a man steals a $100 bill from a store's register. So let's say we have a store and we have a thief. So what happens when a man steals a $100 bill? So the store has a $100 bill in its register and that gets stolen to the thief. So what is this transaction? How do we account for it? Well, clearly the store has lost $100. This is minus 100 and the thief has gained $100, this is plus 100. Notice that negative 100 plus 100 is exactly equal to zero. So we're sure that our accounting is working correctly. Everything is balancing out. So everyone would agree with this step. So it is now this sentence which causes a lot of discussion and arguments. So what happens when he buys $70 worth of goods at that store using the $100 bill and gets $30 change. So let's work out each step. The store has some items which are worth $70. The person pays $100 and receives $30 in change. So this transaction will happen when these items are exchanged. So it goes from one side of the ledger to the other side of the ledger. So how do we account for this? Well, the store has received a $100 bill and in exchange given $70 worth of goods and $30 in change. So if we were to account for this step, if someone just goes into a store and buys something with a $100 bill and gets $30 in change, you would just say that's a normal transaction. You wouldn't say the store is losing any money. If anything, you would say the store might be making a profit on the sale. But for this purpose, we'll just say this transaction exactly cancels out. It's a normal transaction. The store isn't losing anything from this. So if we get rid of this step, we just look at the final tally. How much did the store lose? The store is down 100, and that's the correct answer. Now, if you did want to go in a little bit of accounting, we go back to this step, and you could look at the $70 worth of goods, and you might say it actually costs the store some amount C, and there would be some profit margin on this. So you might wonder, how much profit is the store actually making? What would the cost of the item be? And on average, the net profit margin isn't going to be that much for the store. So this is going to take into account all sorts of factors. It's going to take into account the amount of time that it's going to take to sell the item, the shelf space. There will, of course, be some other costs associated, like the opportunity cost. This sale could have happened to someone else, etc., etc. The items can be returned. So you have to take a look at the true cost of an item. So in this particular case, if it's priced fairly, if we have a perfectly competitive market, we'll just say 
that the cost is going to be about $70. So this all cancels out. So for this exercise, we're not going to take this detail into account. In any case, if someone is getting to this level of detail in their answer, they still understand the general point of the question. I wouldn't be too upset. I wouldn't mark it wrong if I were a grader. In any case, I don't think it changes the answer too much. So now I want to take a look at some common mistakes and misconceptions. So some people think that the store has lost $200. So here's how they work it out. The store has lost a $100 bill. This was stolen. Then $70 worth of goods were bought. The store has lost that. And $30 in change were given. So it would seem that 100 plus 70 plus 30 is $200. But what's missing from this accounting is that this item, this transaction of $70 worth of goods and $30 of change was also counteracted by the $100 that were paid for them. So when you take into account the $100 that were paid versus the $70 that were bought and the $30 of change, this transaction will essentially cancel out. So that's a mistake. You want to get rid of that step. And in the end, the store has lost $100. Another common mistake is saying the store has lost $130. People of this camp will say that the person has stolen a $100 bill and $30 were given in change. So the amount of money that has left the store is $130. So what's missing in this calculation? Well, there's $70 of goods that were also given from the store, they were bought, and this whole transaction was paid for by a $100 bill. So once again, if you take this step into account, this whole transaction will cancel out, and in the end, the store has lost $100. And for completeness, let me just go over the final incorrect response of $30. You know where this is going. These people will just focus on the $30 of change that was given, but of course you have to account for the $100 that was stolen, the $70 of goods that were bought, and this $30 of change and the $70 of goods that were bought were accompanied by $100 that were paid. So this transaction will cancel out, and when you take a look at the final accounting, it is just the $100 bill that was stolen, so the store has lost $100. And that's the answer. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world problem, one video at a time.